Hello, YouTube. Uh, well, with the continued continuing bear market in uh, cryptocurrency, I thought it was time to uh, consolidate my two mining uh, PCs. So what you see here is my dedicated mining rig with a EVGA GTX 1070. Uh, and uh, it has uh, a, a space for another graphics card. And my other mining PC, which is my gaming PC, uh, I want to take the graphics card out of that and put it into this one. And that way, that should uh, hopefully uh, spread some of the cost of running the dedicated rig over two cards instead of one. And uh, well, let me turn off my gaming machine uh, when I don't feel like mining uh, because it's not profitable. So the mining with Nighthash has been uh, marginally, pro minusculely profitable and varies to minusculely unprofitable, whereas with uh, Windminer, uh, it's been consistently mar slightly unprofitable, I'd say marginally unprofitable. So uh, I'm going to open up the uh, dedicated rig so you can see what's involved in uh, adding a graphics card for that. I was a little surprised, it turns out to be a little more complicated than I thought because of some limitations with some other boards. So when I open up the the, uh, the dedicated rig, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so we're back. I've opened up the uh, the rig here. I'm going to show you what the uh, issue is. So <clears throat> we have an available slot here for another graphics card. However, the um, graphics card that I want to put in is my Asus GTX 10, 1070, which is 11 and a half inches long. So to do that, I'm going to have to move this card to that slot and put the uh, the Asus uh, graphics card in this slot. However, uh, when I tried this before, you'll notice that the card extends over the the uh, SATA ports here. So, and with the cables coming out, uh, since it's a two-slot graphics card for the EVGA, it turns out that it bumps, it's going to bump into these. So I have to move my SATA ports, which, uh, which I can do because I have a 1X uh, PCIe slot there. So I went out and uh, looked on the internet, looked for uh, uh, SATA controller that would let me uh, plug it into the 1X slot and uh, found one, an iCrest, IOCrest two-port SATA 3 controller. And uh, so I'll do the unboxing for that now and then I'll come back and I'll install it in here after, uh, because I want to be sure it works before I move the, uh, the EVGA card. So we'll go to the unboxing now. All right, so we're back, and here is the uh, box with the IOCrest 4-port SATA 3 controller. So let's open it up, see what's inside. What do we get? We get uh, some u a user manual. No, nothing particularly important there. Uh, what's this? Limited warranty, terms and conditions, and the driver disc. And here is the controller card. Comes with a half size bracket for a low profile, a uh, one SATA cable, and here's the actual card. Pretty small, so looks good. There are your two uh, SATA 3 ports. So let me measure this. Let me see what's involved. Looks like two and five eighths long. So that's good. It means it shouldn't take up uh, block much of the airflow for the uh, graphics card that it's going to be sitting in front of. So it goes in your 1X PCIe, PCIe uh, 2 or 3, uh, one, 1, 2 or 3 uh, slot. There we go. 
Now let's go put it in the uh, in the machine. All right, so uh, here we are. I've installed the card here. You can see it's uh, because it's pretty short. It only blocks the fan a little bit. Now, when I move the cables, uh, they'll provide a little more obstruction, but not quite as, not, I don't think, significant. Um, but I want to test it now, be sure that it works, because uh, my two SATA drives, one is a boot drive and the other one is a data drive, so I'm pretty sure the data drive will work, but uh, I'm hoping that the uh, it will boot from the, uh, the boot drive correctly with the, SATA, the new SATA controller. So we'll see how it works out. I'm running Windows 10, um, and uh, hopefully it will work with Windows 10. I think the box says only up to Windows 7, but who knows. So I can always return it if it doesn't work. So uh, let's uh, connect the cables. That one. There we go. Okay, all right, so let's be sure the cables don't. Uh, Stop the fan from turning. All right, now let's uh, put it back together and boot it up and see if it works. All right, so we're back. I uh, tried booting up the machine and it didn't work. Uh, it said uh, unable to find a boot drive or whatever the, the typical message is when they can't find your C drive. So uh, I played around with it for a while, figure out what the problem was. <laughs> and the interesting thing is when you boot up the machine and it loads the uh, the drivers for the controller card, <coughs> excuse me, it lists it as the SCSI drives. So that's obviously not the case because the drives are just regular SATA drives. So I installed, I took the uh, driver disk and installed that. And uh, it seemed to have helped somewhat because uh, now it, lists both drives. Uh, it doesn't say SCSI next to the master, the Max Tour drive as it used to. And it doesn't say it on the on my D drive, my Western Digital. So and then I went into the BIOS and set the uh when I booted up the BIOS, uh the drives didn't show at all on the uh the master screen for the BIOS. So I thought, well that's kind of strange. But when you go to the uh, the boot sector in the BIOS, they did show up. So I selected the uh, my Mac store as the boot drive to see if that would fix the problem. And apparently it did. So uh, after multiple tries, it finally got it to uh, boot correctly. Uh, hopefully that will stay that way. <laughs> we'll see, I'm not overly optimistic. So for some, I don't know why it was thinking it was SCSI drives, but it was, so who, who knows. So uh, it seems to be working now, and overall I would say, well, I'm glad it works, uh, but uh, it clearly uh, is not plug and play. You have to install the drivers. Oh, and when I did install, did this run the setup for the driver install, there was an error. It couldn't find the uh, driver folder in the C drive uh, programs x86 uh, full subfolder for the as media folder. So I had to copy that manually over. When I did that, it then no longer had an error doing the install of the drivers. And so at that point, and then setting the, the, boot, uh, the boot sequence correctly, it appears to be working now. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably give it a Oh, maybe a seven. It would have been nice if it was just strictly plug and play, but 
it is an old motherboard. Um, so who knows? Maybe the BIOS won't let me have more than four USB ports. Uh, I have no idea about that. That's a little over my head. Uh, I didn't disable any of the USB ports so that it could pick them up off the controller card. So maybe that's something I should have done but didn't. But it's working now, so I'm going to leave it alone uh, until I get uh, until I move my uh, uh, Asus GTX 1070 in, into the into the case. Hope that helps. Uh, if you're interested in trying out and using this uh, uh, two-point uh, IOCrest SATA 3 two-point controller.